What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years of experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Today, we're continuing this conservation project for this copy of Flash number 139, the first appearance of the reverse Flash from September 1963, written by John Broom with pencils by Carmine Infantino. This is a big Silver Age key from the Flash's rogues gallery, this copy belongs to a friend of the channel. In episode 1, we did a complete walkthrough and assessment of this book and came up with a conservation game plan. In episode 2, we disassembled the book, dry cleaned it, and prepared for wet cleaning. In episode 3, we completed all of our wet work for this cover, aqueous cleaning, deacidification, and resizing baths, as well as tear seals with Japanese paper and wheat paste. While the deacidification, resizing, and tear seals were effective, unfortunately we had some significant ink loss on the cover. In episode 4, we demonstrated a quick and easy way to effectively wash and deacidify one of the interior wraps and completed a tear seal around the bottom staple which was completely torn out. We decided to prophylactically treat the upper staple hole as well because every page of this book already has archival tear seals with Japanese paper, so treating the top staple will not affect the grade of the book at all, but will reinforce the paper where it needs it the most. In episode 5, we trim the excess Tengujo paper from our inner wraps, reinserted the original staples, and refolded the wraps into something resembling a comic book again before putting it in the seal press for a finishing press. If you want to watch any of those videos before you watch this one, follow the link over to the playlist I've created. Today, we're going to pull the comic book from the press and document all of our results so we can look at the before and after pictures and assess the work done. Those of you that have been following this series know that we lost some cover ink during the wet cleaning, deacidification, and resizing of the cover after implementing a few seemingly small changes to my standard methods for these procedures. I was obviously very disappointed in the outcome and not quite sure why it occurred. But after discussing the ink loss with my fellow comic book conservators and reviewing the outcomes, I'm confident we have identified the contributing factors, and I'm going to reveal them as well as potential solutions at the end of the results, so you won't want to miss that. But, before we get to our main topic, I want to remind everyone that we are closing in on our goal of 1,000 subscribers, and in appreciation of subscribers new and old, I'm giving away this copy of Star Wars Number 1 in CGC 7.5 with white pages. This is the first appearance of Luke, Leia, Vader, R2, 3PO, and a host of others, as well as the first cover appearance of Obi-Wan and Han Solo. It was published six weeks before A New Hope opened in theaters in 1977. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and follow the link over to that video to comment there for a chance to win. All right, let's get to work. So after the press, I left the comic to cool for 24 hours in the press. That just helps for there not to be reversion of any crinkles when you do kind of a normal press. After a conservation, I don't think it's quite as important. But I'm a hobbyist, so I don't have to turn this press over every hour. So it's easy for me to leave it in there overnight. Overall, I'm pleased with the outcome here. Obviously, I'm disappointed in the ink loss we have here, but we have a lot of problems with this comic. All the others we addressed quite well. There was a corner completely torn off, and it's reattached. Yes, there's ink loss, but you can't tell that that was detached as a casual observer. All these pages were torn. There's a tear seal here that's essentially invisible without magnification. There's another tear seal here of a compound tear. The pages are 
really nice the inks are bright the paper is strong there's another tear seal it's a beautiful book tear seal essentially like I said every page on this first half of the comic there is one page that didn't have a rip in the end tear seal here nearly invisible from this side really nice book tear seal we did everything to this book archivally here I'll show you the back of those tear seals so you get a sense for you know they're essentially invisible from the other side here you can see what the Japanese paper and wheat paste look like on the back again this is the back so that's as obvious as it gets the other side of course it's essentially invisible these are the repairs to the staple holes so they're on the back of the center fold here's the center fold beautiful staples now recall when we received the book this bottom hole was completely torn out it was detached from the bottom staple so we've restored that You can scroll through the back of the book a little bit more quickly. We didn't have as many repairs back here, but recall every one of these pages was wet cleaned and deacidified. So this paper is going to be good for a century now. I think the color of the paper is good. I'm happy with the outcome there. These covers on the interior of the cover, it looks maybe too white. I do think that's a artifact of my video camera. If you look, especially here on the exterior of the book, I think that color is just right. It's white to off-white. Let's have a look at some before and after side-by-side -side photos. The front cover is obviously what collectors and graders pay the most attention to. And unfortunately, here is where we had the ink loss I mentioned earlier. We did repair the compound tear on the bottom edge of the cover with the archival tear seal using Japanese paper and wheat paste, so that won't be getting any worse. In part, due to the resizing, we have strong paper with good feel and sound, and believe it or not, those are important factors that paper makers and conservators have judged for centuries as being hallmarks of good paper. We also reattached this corner piece that was loose when we received the comic book with the same archival methods. But this top edge is where the ink loss was most severe, so although the repair went well, obviously overall this area looks worse than the before picture. The back cover suffered a little bit of ink loss, but not nearly to the extent the front cover did. Here, the tanning is more obvious on the white gutter that goes all around the art. So the cleaning and deacidification and removal of the tanning improve the overall appearance of the back cover, even with the detraction of some ink loss. The inside covers are considerably more encouraging. Here on the inside front cover, we remove the severe tanning. The tear seal at the bottom edge is nearly invisible. We've replaced the missing upper corner piece, and the paper is bright and supple. We do have a small amount of ink loss here too, but I think overall the appearance is improved between the before and after. On the inside back cover, similarly to the inside front cover, we've brightened the paper considerably, removed the tanning, made the paper supple and strong, and in deacidifying it, we left behind an alkaline reserve that will protect the paper from acid-catalyzed hydrolysis of the cellulose in the coming decades or perhaps centuries. Of the nine total wraps comprising this comic book, eight of them had tears that needed repair. This is an example of the archival repair we did on one of the interior wraps. While we were at it, we gently wet cleaned and deacidified these interior wraps and preserved the vibrancy of the original ink. 
Although the tear seal is obvious here at magnification with intense raking light, under normal viewing with the naked eye, these repairs are not noticeable. When we received this comic book, the bottom staple had been pulled, as you can see from this before picture. So, we repaired the paper around both sets of staple holes in this centerfold. You can see from the after picture, we now have a firmly attached centerfold that can be enjoyed as it was intended to be. Now, let's return to the subject of why we had this ink loss on the cover using innocuous methods that we've used on many comic books in the past. Observers Black Sean and DXC Zook both pointed out that the pattern of ink loss on the front cover was in horizontal lines and suggested this may be a clue to the cause of the ink loss. When I did my initial assessment of what could have went wrong with our cleaning, deacidification, and resizing procedures to result in the ink loss, I laid out several possibilities, including prehumidifying the paper, the use of a surfactant, the rocking of the washing tray, or the sizing solution. It turns out that the ink loss coincided almost perfectly with the ribs in the bottom of the photo development tray that I used for the washes. I collected the rinsate from each of the steps in the washing procedure and did not see ink particulate in the first or second washes, only in the third wash, which was the resizing bath. The best reference that I've been able to find for conservatorial resizing of paper is Chapter 17 of the 5th edition of the Paper Conservation Catalog from 1988, which is available online and I'll put a link to it in the video description. In it, the authors point out that although paper is weak when it is wet due to water molecules disrupting the interaction of the cellulose molecules, when paper is being resized, it's even weaker than wetted paper because the sizing likewise penetrates the paper matrix and interacts with and temporarily disrupts the bonds between cellulose fibers. Of course, it's this very interaction, once the paper is dried, that allows the sizing to add strength to the paper. I believe, based on my research, experience, and the observations I made during this conservation, that the sizing weakened the media such that the gentle rocking of the photo development tray, which is usually well tolerated in an aqueous bath, caused the ink loss. In the future, I'm going to test this theory by running this set of washes back without any agitation in the final resizing step. Thanks to everyone who helped me troubleshoot and gave me ideas for what may have caused the ink loss, both here on YouTube and in the comic book conservation community, our Facebook group, which I encourage anyone interested in comic book conservation to join. That's going to wrap up this video series. It's time to slip this comic book into a mylar and get it back to the owner. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for the conclusion of this conservation project of the first appearance of the Reverse Flash. Most of the materials I use for this conservation project are available from Amazon and the affiliate links in the description if you need any of them for your own conservation projects. Stay tuned for a new project soon. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, take care of one another. Thank <laughs> you.